Hi, it's Darren James from SpecOps Software here. Active Directory password is probably the weakest link in the network. SpecOps password policy with breach password protection makes it easy for organizations to enforce password policies that keep Active Directory passwords strong, uncompromised and compliant. After installing SpecOps password policy, administrators can get started creating new policies via the domain administration tool. And that's what we're going to take a closer look at today. So let's have a look at password policies. Again, one of the big problems that we have with Active Directory generally is that only one password policy is created. But typically, every organization needs at least three these days. One for admins, one for users, and one for service accounts. There may be other requirements as well, such as PCI. But with something like SpecOps Password Policy, you can now create password policies that apply to the right people at the right time simply by linking a GPO to those users' OUs. And because it's group policy based, you can link those GPOs and then filter them on security group, even if you have mixed users in the same OU. Let's have a look at the policy itself and uh, see what we can do in here. So the first tab allows us to choose what type of password we want to apply to our users. So we could choose traditional passwords, the ones that we've been using um, from 2000 today, or we could use passphrases. Passphrases are typically three random words that mean something to us, but nothing to anybody else. But the strength is based on its length rather than it being complex. This means that a passphrase is easy to remember and easy to type and less likely to be written down on a post-it note and stuck around a monitor. The other option uh, we've got here is the ability to enable the users to choose between a password and a passphrase. Remember, we have to find that balance of security and usability. So giving some users the choice who might not be able to get their heads around using a password or a passphrase, um, we can give that user a choice. Now, once uh, we've uh, selected both, we can now take a quick look at password rules. And a key feature that most organizations want to do in here is block words that are related to their organization. So if I hit the edit words in dictionary button here, we can see that I've got a number of words. These, this list can be of any length. The words in this uh, list can be of any uh, character length as well. We will, uh, it's a good idea to add words that relate to your organization, the products and services that you provide, where you've got office locations, even things like local sports teams, schools, that sort of thing. Because if it's a targeted attack on your organization, those are certainly the words that a hacker or a bad actor might use. Uh, you don't have to worry about putting multiple entries of the same word in with you know uppercase or lowercase characters we'll handle all of that for you so it's totally case insensitive and we'll even filter uh, the words uh, out even if the user swaps the o's out for zeros or the s's out for five so they use leet speak um, variations of these words that they'll all be uh, uh, filtered out for you without you having to do anything and we'll even use the word or spot the word inside a password. So if someone types in one, two, three, four, Toronto, four, five, six, question mark, we'll block that word because it contains Toronto. So none of these words will ever be used again. Another thing that's worth looking at is password expiration. So remember back here when we talked about both, we can also give the users a reason to move towards passphrase, and that is to enable length-based uh, password expiration or length-based password aging. So in this example, I've got three levels. So if we set a 10 to 14 uh, character password, because it's such a weak password, I'm going to expire it every 30 days. If they set a 15 to 19 character password, um, I can uh, let them keep it for a year. So I'm going to reward the users for setting that longer password. Uh, so we go from 30 days up to 365. So, you know, it's a bit of an incentive to move towards a longer password. But there's also a final level on this particular policy where if they set a 20 character above passphrase, we're going to let them keep it for near enough two years or 700 days in this example. I can even set it to password never expires if you're feeling that confident. But typically, I don't recommend it. And of course, if we are still expiring people's passwords, it's a great idea, uh, especially if they're working from home, um, to send them an email uh, to let them know that's going to happen. And this email isn't just plain text. 
it's full HTML. So you can include the company logo and give it your organization's look and feel when that email arrives in your user's inbox. Another really useful addition for SpecOps password policy is an optional extra called SpecOps breach password protection. Now, this allows us to worry about all of the leaked passwords out on the internet for you. It takes that concern away from your team. Uh, it comes in two forms, the complete list and the express list. The complete list is the database that we have online. It contains over two and a half billion unique leaked password hashes. And uh, don't worry, we're not sending your users password or hash of your users passwords over the internet. We're sending uh, the first four characters of a bcrypt hash, a 60 character bcrypt hash. So when a user changes their password or when the service desk resets a password, that uh, four character hash gets sent over to the breach password protection database. Uh, we will then return to you all of the hashes in our database that begin with this, those first four characters. Uh, that will go up to the domain controller and the domain controller will compare the full hash with a thousand odd that it's just received. And if it finds uh, that hash on uh, that list, it can send an email and a text message to the user asking them to change that password as soon as possible or forcing them to change it uh, if that option is selected. The other option is the Express database. Um, now, the Express database is a smaller version of the database. It's 750 million words. It will block your users' passwords if uh, they're trying to use if they're on that database uh, instantaneously. So there's no need to go out to the internet and check. It can also continuously check your users' passwords every night to make sure that uh, they've not become compromised based on that on-prem database. So that can be a very useful function as well. Whenever you implement a new password policy, it's also really good to be able to give the user some live feedback during the password change process, particularly if you've moved to things like passphrases. So another option with password policy is to deploy a client that can display exactly what the user needs to do when they're changing their passwords. So as the user starts to type in their new password, you can see those little red dots turn to green ticks. So the user know the, knows that exactly what they've typed meets exactly the policy that's applying to them. And more importantly, if they get things wrong, it tells them what they've done wrong without them having to contact the service desk. And they can choose between passwords and passphrases if you've enabled the both option in the policy, it shows them exactly what they need to do. Protecting the Active Directory password from malicious actors' non-stop attacks is something every IT department has to address. Rather than rely on user training for good password practices or out-of-the-box Microsoft settings, SpecOps password policy can remove weak and compromised passwords from AD environments, giving your team one less thing to worry about. Visit specopsoft.com today to book a demo or trial to see for yourself. Look forward to speaking with you soon. Take care.